Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. In this video I'm going to be replacing my spring plants with some summer plants, the ones on the balcony anyway. I've already planted up a lot of the balcony a few weeks ago with summer plants in the pot that were empty already. So I'll be doing an update video on the whole balcony once these ones are planted up. So you should see that hopefully in the next few weeks. Also I'm going to give it a little bit, little bit more time for flowers to really kind of start showing because a lot of the plants I put in previously, they were very young, didn't have any flowers on them. So I'm just going to wait a little while till they start flowering then you can see the balcony looking at its best. But for this video it's just basically I'm just going to be replace, replacing the plants that um, were there for the spring with some more summer color, colors. So these are the two plants I had. They were actually doing really well. Unfortunately I didn't get a picture of when it was at its best. I was a bit too busy this year to, to get a photo. But I do have some photos I can show you now of uh, a couple of about two or three weeks after I planted them. You can see they were quite small plants and they were looking quite healthy. So they did grow really well after that. This one particularly, this one not so much, but they did have a really good display a few weeks back. They're just starting to go over now. What's happened is it's been a very rare and unusual spring here in Scotland. Uh, we've, had, um, we've had no rain for over a month. It's now early June. We've had some unusually warm weather. It's been in the, low, the high teens to, to, to uh, low 20s Celsius, which is very warm for here in Scotland. Normally it's only about 15, 16 degrees during the day. So it's been three or four degrees above average. Um, also, it's not been very cloudy. Normally we get a lot of cloud, but it's been really, really sunny every day. And uh, violas don't like hot sunny weather, they really like cool damp conditions. So that's kind of stressed them because of the, the, the very hot dry conditions. But also there's been a few aphids and other bugs around because of the warmer weather. So they're starting to look quite poorly now. This one in particular got really badly hit by aphids. Most of the aphids now have been eaten up by um, beneficial insects, which is good. I'll have a quick look now, see if I can find you any of the hoverfly larva. So we did have hoverfly larva on this, clearing up all the aphids. And that's why there's no aphids here at the moment. So I can show you some of the effects of the aphids down here. So some of the effects of the aphids can be seen on this part of the pot. You can see these little white specks are actually some of the skins of the aphids as they were shedding their skin. And there's actually a bit of kind of uh, sooty black mold starting to appear from, from the droppings. You can just see a little bit there on my finger. So I had a good look. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any hoverfly larvae to show you. So either the uh, hoverflies have gone elsewhere because there's no aphids, or they finished their life cycle and have pupated into hoverflies again. But I did, however, find some zombie aphids. So I can show you the zombie aphids. Basically what happens is you get a very small wasp here in the UK and it lays its eggs in the aphid. The aphid then swells up and the insides get eaten out by the wasp. When the wasp is fully uh, ready to emerge, it then actually creates a hole in the back of the aphids and escapes. So I've got two here to show you. I've got one which uh, still has the wasp inside, I believe. It's very hard to see because they're so small, but hopefully we close up on the camera, we'll be able to see them better. So you can see there, that aphid there is quite swollen, it's not moving, it's gone brown. That's actually got a, um, a zombie causing wasp inside it. And uh, the pupa will be developing in there at the moment. When it's ready, it will come out and create a hole in the back of the aphid, fly off and find more aphids to lay eggs on. And I'll show you one now, which is already pupated. So hopefully you can see on the camera there, it's kind of hard to see, I can't, I can't tell if it's uh, visible or not on the, on the screen, but um, there is an aphid there, just around about at this point on that part of the stem, and I think there's a very small hole in the back of the aphid, and that is basically where the, uh, the wasp has come out and, um, and flown away. So hopefully that's shown up on the camera, as I say I can't really tell from the, uh, the small screen I got here on the camera. Hopefully you can see there, the, the, there's a little hole in the back of the aphid. And that's one of the benefits of insects which have helped clear up the aphids, which is good. So that's another reason why I generally don't use pesticide. I find if you use pesticide, aphids become immune to it, then the pesticide stops working, and then there's nothing you can do about it. And if you want to, do you want to introduce beneficial insects by that point, so much pesticide around that the pesticides kill off the beneficial insects, and the, um, there's not much you can do. So, so what I do is I let the aphids attack the plants, I then get a really good supply of beneficial insects around my balcony. So although the first lot of plants like these um, violas here have been really decimated by aphids in the hot dry weather, um, the next lot of plants, they shouldn't have too many issues with aphids because there's so many beneficial insects around that will help, help to deal with them all. So the next plant I'll show you is a Sinetti. Sinetti hasn't done too well unfortunately. It did look really good and I'll show you a picture now of how it was when it was in full flower. It was doing particularly well. But unfortunately there was some wind and it blew off the, uh, the stall it was on and it broke off a lot of its flowers. 
So this is how the Snetti looks now, as you can see it's in a really sorry state. I haven't deadheaded it for a few weeks, and as I say, when it fell off, it snapped off most of the flowers. So you can see some of the old uh, broken branches here. And so it lost, as I say, a bit over half the flowers, unfortunately. And the rest of it's looking pretty sorry now. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna quickly go deadhead it all, and that will help it to put out some new growth. But what I will have to do is I'll have to cut this back really hard in the next couple of weeks. As you can see, there's lots of new growth coming from the base. So once I give this a really hard prune, it should encourage a, a second flush of flowers. But actually there's still quite a lot of flowers on here. There's still quite a lot of new flower buds just about to open. It's still a bit early to cut it back hard. So I'm just gonna cut off the dead flowers and in a few weeks time, I'll cut it really hard and get a second floss, hopefully towards the end of summer. So that's all the old flowers taken off. As you can still see, it doesn't look too great at the moment. There will be a few new flowers coming. But as I say, once I cut this really hard back in a few weeks time, it'll respond really nicely and it will look good again, probably by the end of summer. So this year I'll be planting them up with train lobelia at the front, so they'll trail over the front of the, uh, the balcony forwards over the pots. At the back I'm going to plant some slightly taller plants, so this year I'm going to go for this chrysanthemum snowland. Um, basically it's like a bedding chrysanthemum, it flowers constantly from now until November according to the label. I'm not expecting it to be flowering in November with the Scottish weather, probably September October. Um, by that time anyway I'll be replacing it with the autumn bedding and spring bedding. So this should grow quite tall along the back of the, the pots and then these will trail forward at the front so it should look quite nice hopefully. And with these pots I'll have to be careful with planting them up as ever because of the way that they are designed. They are designed to grow over a, a balcony so because of that there's pretty much no soil in the middle of them so I have to plant a row of plants at the front and a row of plants at the back. If I put anything in the middle there's only a few centimetres of soil. So I'm going to put a row of lobelia at the front of the pots and then a row of the croissants along the back. So the compost I'm going for this year is actually a very rich compost which is specifically designed for bedding plants and hanging baskets. The reason I decided to go with this is it's supposed to feed it for four months so I shouldn't have to worry about too much about feeding. I will probably give it a little bit of a tomato feed just to keep the, uh, the plants going because the high potassium will really help with the flowering. As I say, there should be plenty of feed in this compost. It's supposed to have slow release feed for four months. Also, it's got a lot of wood fibers composted in it, so it's supposed to be really good for retaining moisture. So hopefully I won't have to water these plants as much as I would otherwise with the, with the normal compost. So the way that these bedding plants are bedding packs are designed is there's actually 12 in the 12 little plants in the Lobelia pack. There's only four of the uh, plants in the chrysanthemum pack, so much bigger. So I just have to uh, space them out a lot more. And to be honest, two plants at the back should be enough because these will get quite big over the next few weeks anyway. So I'll also deadhead some of these. There's not too many old flowers, but I'll just nip off a couple of the older flowers on this one. But they're generally just coming into flowers, there's not too many. I'll just go ahead now and plant up the second planter. So that's them both planted up. What I'll do now is I give them a really good soak, uh, top up a tiny bit more of the compost, and then I'll uh, put them out on the balcony. And I'll also attach a photo at the end of this video so you can see how they look once they're actually in their final position. So that's it from this video, and uh, I'll give you guys an update, uh, probably in, in, in about uh, two, three weeks time, and that should hopefully be a whole balcony summer bedding update. And that should be hopefully this will be these will be training over the front. These will have grown up a little bit, and the rest of the balcony should be just starting to come into full flower.